Hi, my name is Bob Vigneault and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we were just uh, in the last video looking at this breakup of a ball lining on this zinc oxide field and we're going to see if we can see anything else that is uh, interesting. I've done a load of samples there so we will share that and we'll go back to the microscope and we'll have a look around. You can see how it's really, really isolated, that structure. The actual sample is oriented differently from how I had it the last time, mostly because the stigmation sample is in a different position, I think. Anyway, we've got good lighting on that last analysis. I'm trying to find the area we were at before so we can see if we can find the object that we had found before. You can't help but wonder if uh, a ball lightning didn't die under one of these mounds. If I go to SCD, you're going to see more of the shape of the landscape here. This is the flat area, and this is quite raised. And you can see these materials coming out, but 
could well be the case. Very strict kind of pentagon structure here. This is where something bounced. See how churned up this channel is. Quite extraordinary, really. <laughs> extraordinary. <clears throat> now there's a splat here and there's a splat here which looked like uh, maybe something happened here and they came out what's going on over here it's definitely at the end of these channels where you see the most interesting things going on is there a ball under there Maybe. Okay, I think it's somewhere around there. Let's have a look at these edges areas here.
find it so striking <coughs> that it is a very, very defined area where these uh, things interact. This has been damaged post experiment, but. <coughs> <clears throat> very, very defined. And what are we sort of talking about? The scale of that is 18 microns, 14 microns, 21 microns. So to the center reach there, yeah, 11 microns. Definitely heaped up. Go to SED, you can get a a lot more of the feeling of the landscape here. <clears throat> so, really is strikingly effective. of this structure here. Hello. <laughs> Hello, what have we got here? Definitely got something in the centre here. What is it? Three microns across, not very big. Let's see if you can bring this into focus. That is one of our balls. Can I adjust the focus here? No, that's the wrong way. And that is as good as we're going to get because of its scale. But that is a ball. And um, maybe if we change to our voltage here, it could give us a better image. <coughs> Isn't that a thing of beauty? Right the way down there, this looks like a bit of detritus that's fallen in, but this is where the music stopped for this bit. And let's have a look at our elements here. Beauty. He's a little one, isn't he? Getting on to the four microns across. 
is right there embedded in the center of this area here. Uh, he didn't get covered. So he might be a substructure of whatever caused this, but he didn't get covered. It might be that we can find a number of these in similar areas, but this is this is a fine example. What a wonderful thing. Actually, it looks like there's an even smaller one down there. So this is probably a, a ball lightning that broke off into several fragments and we're just witnessing the last bit here that is clear enough. I think we'll take a shot of that, don't you? can see the crenellations there. <clears throat> it's just a very small one. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to drop that, change the uh, beam energy here, which is going to make it move as well. And we're going to do the point. Wait for it to go a little bit wrong. We need to refocus our image here. So just so that we know, this is in this tongue area that comes out of this macro, uh, what should we call it? Uh, it, it is um, libation disc, our ankh. So it's throwing stuff out here in the tongue. And we'll focus here. I want to focus on the top. You see how high this is compared to that. That's really set in there. I actually want to focus on the bottom structure here. Slowly change the focus level to a little bit lower down. But we can actually work out. So the top area here is at 7.88 millimeters. If we go down here, um, oh, no, I've gone too far now. <laughs> Our ball is somewhere around uh, 7.9, somewhere there. Do a line scan across this bit. Of course, it might be in a crevice so we don't see what it is. Might not get enough samples. Well, there you go. Look at that spike there. As we go across there, there's our iron ball. <laughs> Every time's a winner. <laughs> yeah, you definitely know what you're looking at now. And where's the calcium? The calcium's this blob here. Calcium associated with the iron ball. It's almost like this blob of calcium was orbiting around here, chopping out this material. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Again, the oxygen is co-located with the iron and the calcium. And not really until you get onto the zinc. Zero zinc here. <laughs> Zero zinc. Zero copper. It's iron, oxygen. And we've got sodium, a little bit of sodium in there. Wow. <clears throat> And so I believe that this burrowed in here, 
cut through the zinc oxide layer or prevented the zinc oxide layer from depositing because what you're seeing down in this area here in the beginning area here so if we go over here is copper and zinc so this is the original brass and this is the zinc oxide over at this end which uh, sort of came, came down at the end of the uh, cooling down of the plates and so this has burrowed its way in here down to the base brass layer tells a really really strong and convincing story love it absolutely love it so I'll do one spot on our iron block one on this one Very clear peak iron. What's this peak over here? Uh, tin or calcium? It's calcium. And what's this one here? Yeah. Uh, aluminium, and this will be. Probably silicon, that's silicon. This is. I don't know why that's tin. Sodium is on the copper. Not sure that's cobalt. Maybe. Cobalt is like iron with something. It's where the iron is, it's got some cobalt. We'll see when we do the point sample in a minute. Not sure that's cobalt. I think it's a misaligned something. I think that is. It's just, no, it's probably just iron. Maybe purple. Iron plus a proton. Proton. Not convinced, but it is around the uh, iron. So let's see when we do the points. It's actually not getting so many counts, so it is pretty trapped in there. So probably better to do point. It's in shadow. That means it doesn't get so accurate. 
It'll also take forever, so I'm going to pause, stop that, and then we're going to look at the point sample when it's done that job. Or not, as <laughs> the case may be. It's ignoring me. So I'm going to do the spot on the ball. Should be iron and oxygen mostly. Another one on here, which should be copper and zinc mostly. And another one on here, which should be zinc and oxygen. And whatever this blob is here, we'll make a chunk off that. Yeah, so that previous one, it, it does have iron, um, but it's getting a lot of reflected samples from the environment, so it's difficult to determine it. It's actually in its own pit inside the raised area, which is inside this pit. So it's difficult to determine, and probably be most accurate on this top area up here. Uh, this second area is copper and zinc, as expected on here. A little bit of oxygen. And the next one is probably zinc and oxygen, which it is. A little bit of copper. Yeah, it's complaining down here. So my last one here, and this is on this block here, and the previous one had 3.7% calcium actually, yeah. 3.1% sodium. This one's got some nickel? Erbium? I don't think so. Really? Really? That might be a might be. Interesting. No, it's a misidentification, I think. It does seem to have a peak here. No, it's iron. It's a bit confused. <laughs> Again, it's probably not getting enough samples. We've only got a thousand samples here. So, yeah. Interestingly, it's mostly sodium. At least at this level of samples. Uh, so I'm not so convinced about that. But anyway, this is a ball lightning core inside a structure that obviously swept and prevented the deposition of the atoms of zinc precipitating onto the brass. Fascinating. And it is in this tongue section of what I'm calling the ank, the sort of area that the outflow from the libation disc of the bank in the Met Museum would pour and you see this pouring out and we were looking at this structure here and if you, if you zoom in uh, we saw that this was uh, one of our wonderful little balls right the way down in here and it is just uh, under four microns across. You see the crenellations here in the small structure. And actually, when we were doing the sampling, this bit was down in here and it jumped out. So, this is probably detritus that found its way in, and this is what was happening. So, um, interestingly, we have this sort of tail area here. But, uh, for me, the big win is seeing how this prevented the zinc from depositing onto the brass. My name is Bob Greener, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project, and this is, I call it, a ball in a hole. A ball hole.